Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I will just wait till people are connecting to their audio and just let a few more people in. Thank you so much for joining us. So I have got Marcus and Devlin with me here to give you a tour of the Museum of Philately. So over to you, Marcus. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And yesterday, actually, we had a, a little group of children, which was great. So I don't know if there are any children out there this evening, but if you are, you're welcome. Um, yeah, a little bit of history before we go into the tour. Um, you know, the inspiration for the museum uh, started way back, um, back in the 50s. Um, there was a, um, uh, an article in Life magazine, which was um, uh, uh, the first real expose of great rarities that, that, that um, Life put together in, in uh, May of 1954. And that was kind of the inspiration for David Feldman and also for me to think about rare, world rarities and what what they meant and then then in the in the in the 90s we produced a a a, a book called the encyclopedia um, of rare stamps and so so and, and then of course that was that was put together by l, l and n williams um, so that was the inspiration behind what it did, what what it was to put together um, information data about rare stamps and then as, as that developed, I took on the project and um, the passion really for us is to look at the collectors, uh, the, the, their collections and their rarities um, in relation to their stories. And we were talking earlier, really uh, our hobby is all about stories. It's all about interconnected stories, whether it's the story of a cover whether it's the story of how a collector bought something, um, whether it is um, the journey of uh, the rarity itself, um, whether it is the, 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 the collector's journey of, of how he put his collection together. So it's, it's that whole interwoven part of, of, of what it is to, to the, the makes up our hobby. And it's those interconnecting stories. And you'll see as we go through uh, this evening, you'll see how those are beginning to play out as we put together um, all the different elements um, within the museum. So we're we'll just a quick word from our sponsor. We would like to thank uh, the, the David Feldman Company for sponsoring us. We are in the process of looking. We've got another major sponsor online at the moment, and we're talking with them. And we're always interested in getting other sponsors. So that's one of the focal points for the next uh, six months. Um, um, now it's over to you, Devlin. Yeah, hello there, I'm Devlin. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us. What we thought we'd do is um, start with a, a, a collection that we've recently sort of taken, taken into the museum and start with looking at Anatoly Karpov's uh, If you go, Marcus, if you go into collect, collect, that's it going to collector oh yeah go to the collector yeah yeah and scroll down to, so basically we've got the collectors listed a to z if we scroll down to um carp off we've recently added a car, three three collections from anatoly Karpov's belgium early belgium collection which was actually sold in 2011 2012 so we, we we've managed to capture that preserve it as it was um, Marcus, if we look at uh, the top one, the very first one, um, the block. That's the collection. Yeah, that's, that's the collection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it once you get once you go into a collection, it, it as a description uh, above the the scans of each page, just tells you a bit about it. Um, obviously, at your leisure, please please have a look at the um, the collection page by page. We'll just show you one example, perhaps Marcus, of one. Of, this is a, an item which is identified as a rarity. So it's actually also in the, the museum as a rarity. And you can drill down and have a look at the um, stamp in a little bit more detail. And th this, this particular item, if you scroll down, Marcus, we've 
also attached to the record the price information that it sold for during uh, 2011 when it sold for 240,000. Indeed, I think that was a record-breaking price as well for Belgian philately at the time. And we also start to build up a picture of its bibliography as well. So as, as we move down this road, we're going to start to add records relating to any articles or any books that this, this uh, rarity features in. Um, so if we go, if we go just back. One, just, yeah, just, just pull up something there. Um, on the prices, um, one of the, um, the next developments to the, to the product is going to be a, um, a way in which we can pull the information about uh, the prices, um, their, their projections, what they sold for, and their historical sales, and be able to really give some financial, some real financial information to those interested about uh, stamp values and how they, this is not, this is not for investment. This is just to give data because people are always looking for data, L looking for data about stamp values and how they've developed over the, over the, over time. And we want to do this for all our rarities, all our rarities. We want to be able to give that data. So that's, that's the next piece of development, which I'm actually speaking with our uh, developers as we speak um, uh, to, to develop that. So that's the next one of the next new innovations of the, of the museum. Sorry, Devlin. No, that's okay. No, and if we go back to um, the, 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 the collection, if you just backspace, I'd probably be big, big, big. Yeah. Um, and, and scroll up. And then what, what I thought we would do, Marcus, is just have a quick look at one of one of his other collections, perhaps the, the second one down. So uh, if you uh, if you backspace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we go to the Medellin. Medellin. Yeah. You say it much better than I do. <laughs> well, it's all those years living in Switzerland, the yeah. Medellin. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, it's, we've got a description of the, 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 the collection. You can look at each page. Um, and then if we look at the 1863, the complete series on cover, uh, Lace Test, it's... Um, Is it no, but, no. no, bit further, it's near the top, Marcus. It's the blue, blue this cover. One. This one, yeah. Um, this is a stunning cover. Uh, again, we've put in the price information that it sold for in 2012 um, and started to attach any uh, um, bibliographies or where it's featured in an article or in a book. Um, but picking up what you were just talking about, Marcus, um, about adding uh, price information through time, if, if, if an item that we could look at, which is quite topical, is the British Guiana one cent magenta. Um, because that's in the news at the moment. So if we go to rarities, go into rarities. I'll just go, I'll just go to collectors because I'll just, I know where it is. Just go down to, um, there he is. The current, the current owner is Stuart Weitzman. So Stuart Weitzman's got two very special stamps in his collection. One of them being probably the most famous stamp, but certainly the most Googled stamp, and it's current, the current holder of the world's most expensive stamp. So in here, what we've done is in the last sort of few, few weeks, we've updated the record with the latest scans from Sotheby's because this item's coming up for sale on the 8th of June. And then what we've done is, as an example of what we're trying to do in terms of um, adding uh, data and records to it, we've, we've backfilled the data on, from, from, from uh, sales records of who's owned it, when they owned it, how much they paid for it when they bought it. Um, and so you, you can see just on the right hand side on the provenance, we've got Weitzman, uh, DuPont, Weinberg, Frederick Small, Arthur Hind and Ferrari. Um, and of course, Marcus was just hovering over the back of the stamp. Of course, there's a lot of news um, articles about this stiletto shoe on the back, you know, whether you like it or don't like it, or whether you think it's vandalism or it's marketing genius, it's it's certainly you know, an interesting topic, top, topic. and it, it's got stamps, you know, in the headlines and got people talking about stamps, uh, even if they're not interested in them. So, you, you know, be interesting to see if it does sell, Marcus, and, um, yeah. you know, because of course if it does, we'll update the record with a new owner if we know who it is and update the record with a new price. And then, and then the other thing is, of course, what we want to try and do is bring in the interactive side. So what we've been able to do is upload the um, the Sotheby's video, um, which is just just new now. 
so that's that's got a link here to the Sotheby's video. I'm not going to click on it because it'll just take us there. But what I'm saying is that it's not the content is not just static content. It's content that's going to give you an interactive experience. Um, and of course, then we can. I think we can click on the on the the encyclopedia. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, if you yeah, I mean, if you click on the Sotheby's link, it does take you to the website where they've got a video presentation. That's yeah, one of the most exactly. re recent ones. And then we, you know, if we've got um, a, an article about it, so there's an article about the mystery, the mystery of the stamp. stamp. That that's your that's your article, right? That's uh, an article we've written about yeah. John Dupont, uh, who was a previous owner of the stamp. Again, a fascinating gentleman. Um, but what 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 the, the the other place we could go to now? That's a nice um, stamp that's in the news. Is we we've looked at Karpov, who was who is a current collector. He still collects Imperial Russia and the Olympic Games. Um, shall, shall, if we scroll down, Marcus, to Ferrari, who's in the provenance record. Scroll down in this record. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yes. Okay. Sorry. No, that's fine. Um, I'm just thinking he's he's the first owner of this site. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Um, so if you look at this record of a collector, he's a classic collector. Everybody knows Ferrari. He, he, he apparently assembled one of the world's greatest collections. And certainly he had many of the world's rarities in his collection before it was sort of broken up uh, in 1922 sales. Um, and what we're doing is every time we add a, a rarity that on the provenance record has him as a, as a, as a previous owner, we're, we're attaching it to his file. So you start to build up a picture of what he had in his collection. Yeah. Um, and so and one already, of, of course, one of the one of the interesting ones is the uh, the Romania bull Tet Besh, um, which uh, <laughs> which has disappeared, right? Right, Devlin. Yeah, it's not been seen since 1950 when uh, King Carol II had it in his collection, and, it, and he brought it to London, funny enough, to uh, exhibit. And it's not been seen since. And there's there's a story that says that it, this, and along with a few other items, has not been seen for the last 70 years. Uh, were taken up to Mexico, where he initially sort of uh, uh, went for refuge, if you like, after he abdicated from 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 uh, from Romania, and because he couldn't get his money out quick enough, that he may have put some of these stamps up as collateral. Um, I think some of the Mexican people he got in with didn't have the same lending criteria as perhaps some of the banks around the world. So whether we'll see that that stamp again, I don't know, Marcus, but it's an interesting one. And we put it in the database because let's face it, if that did come on the market today, it probably would be a contender for one of the world's most valuable stamps. But while we're here, let's also have a look at the British Guiana, the Ferrari 12C pair, because that's named after him because it's it's um, a scarce British Guiana. And we've got in here that the most recent sale was the DuPont sale in 2014 when it sold for 156,000. And if you click on the image uh, of the stamp, Marcus. Of the stamp? Yeah, it's just a good, just to show good quality image. We, we, because we had this stamp in our, in our possession at one point, we were able to do a very high resolution scan. If you compare that with the one that we just looked at, the only available scan that we have is the one that's on the system. But if, if we have the stamps to hand, we will put higher res resolution scans. And here, if we've uploaded the certificate, so if you click on that certificate, it shows the BPA certificate that came with the item when it was sold. And um, indeed, it's something that we've recently done in the, in the museum alongside that certificate is the BPA. If you click on that, we, they've now got a homepage where we can uh, talk a bit about what they do and also attach any, any certificates that they've issued that relate to any rarities that are in the museum. And so we, we, we've up, uploaded quite a few recently for ready for, for virtual Stampex and you can see them there. But if you go to the expert section, um, and that uh, BPA obviously a, a, a current modern day uh, expertizing uh, authority. If you go into, uh, look at Alberto Diena, um, Marcus Alberto, um, that's it. Now he's he's a sort of legendary sort of uh, expert from 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 the sort of fifties and sixties. And indeed, if you look at the certificate, Italian states the bottom one that. That is something he issued in 1976, 1976, just not long before he passed away, sadly. But that's a classic um, certificate. And if you go back to the record, we can actually look at that item once. If you scroll down and click on the, the link to the item itself, that's it. 
you get to see the cover in its full glory. And that not that beautiful, magnificent tricolor first day cover from Italian state. Um, and so, yeah, a recent addition is this expert session, section. We're, we're populating it with more and more experts um, and we'll and continue again, to do and so. And again, you know, Devlin, just to come, just for me to interject there, the, the, the desire of course in, um, in everything we're doing with the museum is also from an educational um, side. And we, our desire will, would be to work with um, expert uh, groups, ex individual experts if possible, and really be able to uh, bring a, a fresh um, perspective for collectors um, about the importance of expertise and um, the op just to have a, 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 an openness uh, about the, the world of expertise. Often it's something that's kind of hidden. We sort of talk about it, but it's not really out there. We really want to educate collectors more in what goes on in, in, the, in the lives of experts and expert committees. So we would really love to work with an expert committee on developing this and, and making it more, it more interactive. And, and um, so that's, that's, the, that's the brains behind the experts section is not just to have static content, but also to have interactive content. Yeah, and it'd be really great as well to tell some of the stories about some of these experts because, you know, in their own right, some of these guys are collectors as well as uh, authorities in their own field. And some of the ones from the past um, are, are, have got some worthy stories attached to them, which would be good to expand on that in time. But it, 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 in the short term, we need to populate that with all the expert authorities that relate to any of the rarities we've got certificates for to give more information at people's fingertips when they're looking at the uh, the records of any particular item or collector or collection. Um, the, the other thing is we've just recently put in a blog. Um, so we're gonna to start to put articles, videos, tell people about what we're up to. Yeah, um, we, we, we did, did you just talk about the conversation with Philatelist? Yeah, click on that. Yeah, we recently were asked to be on the conversations with Philatelist, which is um, Charles Epting, um, over in New, New York and um, Michael Cortese that, that they started this initiative during lockdown it's a fantastic initiative and it's got quite a bit of traction there's a lot of people engaging with what they're doing and we were honoured to sort of go on it and we had great fun it was you know it was a really good fun uh, episode and I recommend to have a look at it if you've not seen it so far um, I mean we've written quite an interesting article about uh, Karpov we started with him um, he, he's obviously a world famous chess player grand chess master uh, it was a world the world chess champion for 10 years solid then a further three years after that we, we we've done an article on him which relates to uh, the netflix series the, the queen's gambit we call this the king's gambit you know we've asked the question who would win if beth Harmon sat down with um uh, anatoly karpov so you know read read the article sit, sit, see if you think we're right um and one of the reasons we're mentioning this blog is that um next month we shall be launching our newsletter so if you want to sort of keep in touch with uh, the new additions to the Museum of Flatterly, to any updates and developments, uh, and also some of the interesting stories behind uh, the collectors and the rarities, then um, please go onto our website and hit the sign up to newsletter and we'll keep you informed with our monthly uh, email. And then it'd be good, I don't know if we can, Marcus, look at, um, I was just thinking, we just mentioned to Charles and uh, Michael, is it possible to go back to um, rarities and have a look at the blue boy cover? Could we look at that one? Oh yes, yeah, uh, yes. Oh no, wait. Well, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know where to get us. I mean, there's it's been in the it's been in the collection of some pretty exciting individuals. Um, you know this chap better than I do, um, but we'll talk about him about some. So the blue boy cover uh, is an interesting. Um, item indeed i mean it was i think it was the first million dollar item in u.s philately sold in 1981 it's it just has just been it's just been resold again so we, we we're we're aware of that we just didn't get a chance to up up update that but that 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 is one of the challenges of course with a with a museum is that you're constantly in need of updating and and just on, on that subject um the, the the museum started a number of years ago when our resources were 
uh, limited. Whereas now we have actually added to our team um, about a year ago, right? Devlin, you joined us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sort of, Devlin's yeah. been with us about a year and has brought um, tremendous energy in both writing and in, in content, um, uh, uploading content. So it's great to have him. And we've just brought Isabel Klemka on board and she's doing all the, let's say, the, 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 the PR stuff. Um, which has uh, been a huge addition. So we went from one to three. So, you know, the team is, we're really taking this seriously. We want to take this to the next level. So it's just exciting. Um, we're excited um, about all that, what this can bring. And, and to a certain extent, you know, we, we talked earlier about, about um, uh, the past and the present. We also want to build for the future. So we're looking at the past, collectors of the past, We've been talking about Karpov, the collectors of the present, um, and we want to really educate and bring in the collectors for the future. And you've done you've done a series of articles uh, to do with modern day collectors and also uh, past collectors, haven't you, Devlin? Yeah, yeah. We, we we started a series last year called Legendary Collectors, where we started from. Uh, you know, point zero, you know, when did collecting start and, and who are these people that sort of got involved with philately? And we, we've published, I think, 24 of them on the David Feldman blog. Uh, we're up to And those will then be slowly, we'll, we'll, we'll feed those into uh, the Museum of Philately as we, as, we, as we start to develop the Museum of Philately as, a, as an entity on its own, um, which is what, it, this is what this is all about, the newsletter and so on. So we'll start to pull this content from the DF website onto the, the the Museum of Philately, and it'll be a standalone. So go on, sorry, go, go ahead. Yeah, no, and, and then what we've done is with this new blog with um, the Museum of Philately, we, we started with 21st century collectors. So we, as we took on Karpos collection, we thought well, we'll start with him. So he's he, he started off our series of uh, the world's greatest collectors of the 21st century, but we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna carry that series on and eventually that will meet in the middle with our legendary collectors you know because we will go back in time and that that legendary collectors is coming forward when we're at alfred kaspari's at number 24 i've written 32 of them we, we get to uh Boca at 31 i think uh louise boyd dowell's at 30 um but but yeah we, we're gonna we've got a, a target list of current day uh collectors who we're going to start to write about who we're going to also put in this in in the museum and we're going to celebrate what they've done and their achievements and we're going to hopefully inspire the next generation of, of collectors. And of course, um, the, the next step, of course, is not just do articles which are static, but actually now with, with so much of the Zoom and, and, and video content that's possible today, we're going to start to, to meet and interview um, collectors, present day collectors, and actually bring that content onto, onto the museum. Yeah. And then the only other thing that would be good, just if you scroll down on here and click on, just to give people an idea on the bibliography, if you click on the incriminating cover title, yeah. that's just the link to uh, an article that was written about this cover, which tells the story of it. And if you don't know the story of it, it's quite an interesting one. It's quite romantic as well about the fact that this was really a love letter between two people who were forbidden to, to, um, to, to, to correspond with each other. And at the end of the letter, the chap said to a burn as usual, the, the recipient, the lady, she didn't she didn't burn it. She tucked it away in her um, sign box and forgot about it. Um, and then uh, many years later, her daughter found it and um, it turned out to be a very rare cover, which was then sold to, to Worthington, who's a famous uh, collector, USA collector. Um, but it's quite an interesting story because it should have been burnt. It didn't. It's the only one of its kind. But it, 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 it's um, the romance. Is, is kind of what makes the story. But also that that particular story, I don't know if you can see it, it's just getting a bit dark here. Can you see that, Marcus? Yeah, yeah. So that, that's appeared this month in Stamp Collector magazine. Um, so in, in traditional format, but it's also on a PDF as well and on the website. They, they spotted that and said, oh, can we use that article? So they've published it in traditional uh, magazine. And I don't know if you can see, we've also mentioned the two boys at um, Conversations with Philatelist. It just so happens that coincidentally, they started a, 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 an article in the same same um, publication this month, and I, I I contacted Charles and said, "Look, you know, this is amazing. You you started a, a 
a feature in this magazine the same month as I, I'm in there. And um, look, if you look here, there's a picture of Charles Emptying on the front here as a contributor. And there's a picture of me just underneath him. So I sent that to him via Twitter and he had a bit of a chuckle. And he said, you're not going to believe this, but you see that picture of me? That's a cropped picture of me holding the Alexandra Blue Boy. I mean, can you believe that? And that's the beauty of this, this, this hobby. It's just all these interconnections between the past, the present, and also hopefully the future. Because one day somebody might be saying, oh, do you know what? I attended the Museum of Flatterly um, Museum tour and it inspired me to buy the British Guiana one cent magenta. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, so, so. But, but, but ultimately, our hobby is all about stories. And I said that at the beginning. And we really, really believe that we have to, as a, as a body of collectors and as, as um, whether, we're, whether you're a dealer, whether you're, you're involved in a, in, a, um, uh, in, in a club or an association, a society, we've got to start telling the stories, I believe. A lot of what we're doing is a best kept secret and the world doesn't really know about us. They really don't. We, we keep our stories to ourselves and we really have to get these stories out. I mean, Devlin and I have, have, have uh, done experiments where we've actually sent these articles to non-collectors and they, they're gobsmacked. They, they're amazed at all this inter inter interrelated pieces of information and also the stories of the people you know as well not just the items but the stories of the collectors so this is part this is another side of the museum which we want to really bring out we want to we want to promote the stories and and and, and the connections sorry devlin go ahead no that's no, fine no I, I agree with you marcus and what you're kind of saying is we don't we don't want to put a stiletto shoe as such on 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 our stamps and covers but we we do want to we do want to put a bit of glitz and, and, and glam and romance and put the stories behind behind them. So, you know, it makes it appealing and attractive to a wider audience, young and old. Just just a, uh, just a quick, a quick, by the way, we're working with a, uh, a philatelic paper restorer. Uh, it's, a, it's a woman based in the US, uh, very reputable. So we're just trying to add some services to what we're doing. Um, we're also working with a guy um, doing um, exhibitic, ex exhibitic, exhibiting services, mounting your collection. And recently I've, I've had conversations with um, my, my developer, of course, what's happening. And I've been, I was in recently in a, in a webinar for the APS talking about virtual exhibiting. And this is of course <laughs> a hot topic at the moment. Everyone's talking about virtual exhibiting. The big challenge for virtual exhibiting is that how do you, how does the collector build his collection in a virtual environment? How does he do it? We know how to do it physically on pages because we've all been doing that. Um, but how do we, how do you actually build your collection in a virtual world? And so, in fact, we've been doing catalog through through the Feldman company we've been we've had uh, automatic page layout programs in our um, in, in our company for I don't know 10 or 15 years the technology's there the technology's out there to create a product which will help collectors actually create their own collection in a virtual world um, I know this is all sounds all fantasy but in fact I think it can be reality so that could be another aspect of, of what we want to bring to uh, to and through the, the Museum of Philately. Right. So is it worth asking if there's any sort of questions uh, yep. that people have got based? Anybody yeah. out there got any? Thank you, Devlin. Thank you, Marcus. If anyone's got any questions, you can just unmute yourself and ask, ask them or you can pop the questions in the chat box. We don't want to scare you. Yeah. I'll ask one, guys. Um, so how, how did the museum kind of come about? Was it purely from the, the stuff that sold from, by David Feldman? Um, well, no, it, it came about um, really, uh, I think I said at the beginning, with the fascination that, that uh, David Feldman had for 
rarities of the world. And this book, basically, these books, two books we produced, basically is <laughs> um, a snapshot of a lot of what is in the museum. And, it, and most of the stuff in the book has got nothing to do what, what, with what we sold. It's, I see. It's, it's, um, it's, it's basically a, um, uh, a listing of, of, you take, for example, you could take the Tetbesh stamps of uh, Finland. So in here, we have all the Tetbesh stamps of Finland with their, with their corresponding uh, buyers when they were sold and so on and the history. So it, this is a static version of that. The Museum of Philately wants to bring all that into a virtual world. At the same time, connecting with collectors um, and then of course with, um, uh, with their collections. So that, that's really how it all started. Yeah, so I mean, sorry. I was just going to say, I mean, just while I've been at, um, uh, at Virtual Stampex, I went to the Cherry Stone uh, booth. I think they're called booths, not stands, aren't they? And uh, I got into a conversation with them about two stamps they sold last year, both over a million pounds, just single stamps. Um, and I said, look, do you mind if we have the scans and the details? Can we put that into the museum? And, you know, we'll say that, you know, Cherry Stone sold it, but we just need that. These are big ticket items that are sold in the last year for $1.6 million and $1.1 million. And they said, yeah, absolutely do it. So, yeah, wherever we see a, a rarity, even if it's um, been sold by, you know, another auction house or even by a dealer, we will we'll want it in the system because it's information, uh, making information available to everybody across the world at their fingertips. Thank you. Um, we've had a question in the um, chat function. So this is from Jeff who asks, what criteria is used to determine which collections are included in the museum online? Also, do you plan to expand the criteria as the site grows? Well, you know, that's, you know, there, there are, I mean, you know, in a sense, and I don't want to burst um, our bubble, there are other products out there um, that are, um, illustrating collections there's a number of them and they're huge they're populated um, with lots and lots I mean hundreds even thousands of collections um, but that's not our plan uh, our plan is to try to work with the best of the best within a field so it could it doesn't necessarily have to be a valuable collection but it's got to be the best in that field uh, I talked to somebody the other day uh, a GB stamp, an, uh, um, a, a, I can't tell you which one it is because that would uh, let the cat out of the bag, but it's a, uh, a key GB stamp. And the guy's done a study just on that stamp. And it's a major and important stamp of Great Britain. And he's done a, a study on that. And he's got an 80, 80, 80 page um, uh, exhibit on that. And then I asked him, I said, is this the best collection of this stamp? And he said, absolutely. I said, well, I want that for the museum. So I suppose that's the kind of criteria um, that we're looking at. I mean, it is, it is delicate. And um, the idea to, 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 to grow it in the future, um, I'm not going to go beyond the great collections of each area, because then it just becomes just something that's unwieldy. I want to keep it to, to the, the top of the top and, and including, of course, the rarities that go with it. I hope that is, that, that's, that's clear. Oh. He says, thank you. That, that helps to understand the mission. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, has anyone else got any other questions? You can just unmute yourself so I can see. I think, Perfect. Well, I think that um, Marcus and Devlin will be on the booth um, just after this and tomorrow as well. So if you've got any further questions, please do pop past. Um, we've, yeah, got that, we've got that uh, um, presentation tomorrow as well. Yes. The... Sorry, sorry. Hi. Can I, can I ask uh, Marcus, you know, when, when is the Museum of Philately launched? When was it launched? Yeah. Oh, um, well, it's probably four or five years ago. But as right. I said, as I said in my, as I said in my um, uh, talk earlier, um, oh. we, we've just been understaffed, basically. I didn't have the resources. And 
of of late we have um added uh devlin and 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 most recently isabel to the team so now i i have i have a um a real team behind me so we're we're we the last six months we ramped it up so we're now on the move as they say <laughs> right because to be honest you know last year i launched my <laughs> museum of <laughs> the Land museum you know we have got the same name you know <laughs> well, well you've got a, you've got something called the museum of philately uh, no uh, philately museum Oh, okay. so, you know, it's, a, it's okay. the same as yours, you know, that's oh, why right. okay. I well, asked you this question, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's been about five years, I think, yeah. All right, okay. Yeah. Okay. I understand, um, I understand. But um, yeah. I'd love to chat with you if you've got some ideas and maybe we can, um, maybe there's something we can do together. Uh, yeah, why not, you know, because in the last year, uh, before, to be honest, I launched this before COVID-19, you know, and yeah. uh, last year, I I heard a lecture about uh, another museum, so I thought, okay, maybe I can find whether I can register a, a, a website like uh, a stamp museum or something. But somebody already has got it, you know. And I found uh, philatelymuseum.com. Nobody registered, <laughs> so okay, I registered straight away. And of course, last year I gave a talk to the APS, you know, and uh, and then you can imagine the COVID nineteen, you know, was uh, serious, and uh, everybody has uh, launched the website, you know, <laughs> about uh, philately or stamp or, you know, uh, I think I think uh, last year maybe I don't know how many websites you know launched. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, hopefully, hopefully you've seen from my presentation today that our unique selling point in that sense is that we're trying to pitch it at the sort of top, you know, the Grand Prix winning, the gold medal winning or the unique collections and also focusing on the collectors that put those together and building up a database of the, the world's top rarities. So hopefully there's room for other platforms out there to pick up. Clearly, there's demand for collections at a, a different level. That, that, that if we put them into our system, I think we just dilute the project completely. But you know, they have a place somewhere. There's people, you know, pe people out there that, as you say, Jack, that are putting together systems for different types of uh, collections, different types of uh, uh, collectors, um, and, and maybe that's 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 something that you can you, you know you can sort of work with, and we can have a chat with you about it perhaps offline uh, another time. Yeah, no problem. You know, I think. I think Marcus uh, idea is right, you know, and uh, you are doing the right thing because, you know, David Feldman, you know, you got a very uh, good, uh, uh, how to say, database or materials there. So I think maybe uh, you show something like, uh, you know, the best of the best is, is I think that, that that's, a, that's a good, you know, that's good. And, uh, you know, there are so many, you know, websites, they got uh, normal stuff, right, collections. So, you know, we just, uh, you know, balance. Maybe, you know, somebody do, you know, all different, you know, uh, just like, uh, you know, you are doing the, 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 the LV, you know, stuff, you know, somebody do the middle, you know, level, and, and we got, uh, uh, you know, some other, you know, uh, H&M, -H you know, and all different level. I think, yeah, it's good, you know, yes. different target. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much for your input. Huh? Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Great, thank you so much. And as uh, Marcus just um, alluded to, we will, uh, the museum will be hosting a talk with um, John Davis uh, tomorrow morning, who is going to be um, showcasing his um, collection, uh, the GB 1890 Penny Posted Jubilee. Um, which is on the uh, uh, the museum as well, so that should be good, and that will be in the uh, live in the Spink Auditorium at eleven a.m. Anyway, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, thank you, Devlin. We thank will you. Um, see you later. Okay, thank you. Thank Bye, you. everybody. Bye -bye. Bye, bye. Bye. 